Oh, it's a good idea. Good afternoon. I'm very honored uh, to talk to you about big bounce and inflation from a spin and a torsion. Does it work? Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm come here from University of New Haven, Connecticut. So my talk will be about the earliest uh, times of the universe, Big Bang and inflation. Uh, so general relativity... Uh, describes gravity as a curvature of space-time. However, it has uh, several problems. Well, the biggest problem is uh, the problem of singularities, where the matter has infinite density. Also, we know that uh, general relativity is incompatible with uh, quantum mechanics, and possibly quantum gravity could resolve the singularity problem. However, uh, field equations in general relativity uh, they have a symmetric energy momentum tensor, which means they predict uh, the conservation of orbital angular momentum for a free particle. However, we know that Dirac equation, which is relativistic quantum mechanics, uh, uh, predicts the conservation of total angular momentum of elementary particles, orbital plus spin. And so separately, orbital and spin don't have to be conserved. And this is, that cannot be done within general relativity, which means uh, general relativity has to be extended. And the simplest extension is uh, called Einstein-Cartan uh, theory of gravity, which was actually started in 1921, 1922. So this is, it's older than Schrodinger's equation. Uh, uh, and actually, I have to mention the first director of the uh, Center for Astrophysics, Professor George Field. He wrote a like, like long time ago a paper on Einstein-Cartan gravity, and also another uh, professor, Rosanne Di Stefano, also uh, was involved in torsion. So, yeah, it is a nice subject, although it's a little underexplored, I would say. So I find it fascinating that uh, we can still do something about this. Uh, so uh, the problems of Big Bang uh, cosmology and inflation. So, of course, Big Bang singularity. What caused the Big Bang and what existed before? Well, this could be a philosophical question also. Uh, now, about inflation. So inflation is a very successful uh, scenario which explains horizon and flatness problems and also uh, the observed uh, patterns in uh, CMB, but what caused inflation? Um, well, most uh, used assumption is uh, scalar fields, although there are some problems with uh, like single scalar fields. So uh, there's like a lot of models of inflation, and uh, they used like uh, several free parameters. Now, also there's a problem how inflation ended. Yeah, because uh, uh, like chaotic inflation would cause eternal inflation, so the universe would be inflating forever, and we know it did not. So. Uh, so I want to show you that Einstein-Cartan theory uh, does several things. It can uh, remove the singularity at the Big Bang and replace Big Bang with Big Bounce, uh, before which the universe was contracting from something. And also the dynamics uh, immediately after the bounce can solve horizon and flatness problems. This is the generic feature of bouncing cosmologies. But also uh, we can uh, generate inflation uh, from uh, from uh, from torsion. So here's Einstein-Cartan, actually Einstein-Cartan Shyama Kibble theory in the 60s. Shyama and Kibble uh, actually ex used Einstein-Cartan uh, to Dirac fields. Uh, so basically, here's a fine connection, which is the uh, quantity in general relativity used to do calculus on curved space. And Einstein assumed it is symmetric, which means he imposed some constraint. And Cartan said, why to impose constraint? Just let it be whatever it wants to be uh, from the principle of least action. So, so, so adding torsion to gravity is not putting extra thing into theory. It is actually removing one constraint. So it is more, more natural. Uh, so here's a torsion tensor, anti-symmetric part of the affine connection. So uh, by varying the Lagrangian, which is the simplest possible Lagrangian, it is proportional to Ricci's scalar 
uh, but now we have torsion, uh, uh, we get uh, uh, Cartan equations, uh, and torsion is proportional to the spin density of fermions. And actually, uh, so it is nice because in vacuum, uh, if there is no, uh, there is no fermions, uh, then there is no, uh, there is no uh, torsion. Uh, so Einstein-Cartan reduces to general relativity, and basically Einstein-Cartan passes all the tests, uh, which are in observation, and torsion becomes significant only at very, very extremely, very, very high densities. Uh, much higher than neutron star density. So basically, uh, torsion uh, is only relevant when we have to fix general relativity to remove the singularity problem. So here are C Cartan equations. Here are Einstein equations. So Einstein tensor, th there are some corrections uh, to energy momentum tensor. Uh, well, th those corrections initially were on the left-hand side of equations. There were corrections to uh, 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 curvature tensor, but using Cartan equations, we can put them on the right-hand side. So basically, we have spin corrections to energy momentum tensor, effectively. And uh, now, macroscopically, Dirac fields can be averaged as uh, spin fluid. So here are the properties of spin fluid. And when you substitute uh, this spin tensor uh, approximated as a spin fluid to Einstein Cartan equations, and write them for a uh, homogeneous and isotropic universe, we get Friedman equations, but you see that in Friedman equations there are some corrections to energy and pressure coming from s uh, averaged value of the square spin, so it's not zero, I even for random orientations of spin it's not zero, and this is negative correction to energy density, which means, uh, and, and it, it is also quadratic, it is quadratic in uh, number density of fermions, which means when universe is very, very dense, uh, the, this term, the negative term, grows more. Uh, I mean, can be dominant and can cancel the energy density term. So basically, we could, we could have here zero, and basically this negative term manifests itself as gravitational repulsion. And basically, with, with this equation, the scale factor cannot become uh, 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 cannot reach zero. So the Big Bang singularity is uh, avoided, which was found in 1970s by Troutman, Kopczynski, Hell, and others. So it was like an um, uh, old result. Now, uh, for relativistic matter, we can rewrite our einstein cartan equations in terms of, in terms of uh, temperature. So temperature is like, uh, yeah. So we have basically two differential equations for, uh, for scale factor and temperature. They are coupled, so we can just integrate them. They are difficult to solve, actually impossible to solve analytically. And here, Another uh, uh, part, important part comes. Well, uh, near the bow, uh, so, so, so we don't have Big Bang, we have bows, right? The scale factor cannot be zero. So basically, the universe was contracting, reached the minimum scale factor, and started expanding. But near the bows, we have strong gravitational fields, and quantum effects in strong gravitational fields uh, uh, result in particle production. So Parker, Starobinsky, Zeldovich in the 70s, 80s uh, were working, and several other people as well. So basically, there is a particle production rate which is proportional to curvature. So it comes here, and uh, uh, it has to be added uh, to the second Friedman equation. Uh, so Actually, second Friedman equation can be uh, rewritten as the first law of thermodynamics, but without particle production, uh, it would be isentropic uh, expansion, but particle production uh, causes, uh, causes uh, the increase of entropy. Uh, so we don't need uh, reheating. Actually, we don't need reheating because inflation, I'll show you in a moment, it will end. It's, it's not eternal. It, it basically, it naturally dies. Uh, so basically, when we combine uh, those two einstein cartan equations with particle production, we get this equation, and this is basically here uh, uh, from, from the, from the uh, first Friedman equation, we can find out what is the maximum value of the, of, of the growth of uh, a dot, of the growth of the scale factor. So we can plug in it here, and now to avoid in internal inf eternal inflation, this term cannot be negative, because it, if it is, then uh, we would get the growth of temperature of the universe with the growth of the universe. So kind of, that's not logical. Temperature d d goes down when scale factor goes up. So, uh, so basically this condition that this term has to be uh, bigger than uh, zero uh, basically gives us uh, the, uh, the maximum value of the part, uh, uh, particle rate production coefficient. And basically when 
this particle rate production coefficient is very close to this value, which is, yeah, actually, when it's, it's, it's a numerical value, it depends on the thermal degrees of freedom of all the particles, so we have to know how many particles we know, and in the early universe we may have more particles. So, uh, assuming standard model particles exist only, we have this number. So, basically, uh, for, this, uh, for the particle production just below this critical value, we discover that temperature is approximately constant, and the expansion is uh, here, this is constant value, so this is uh, constant Hubble parameter, so we have uh, exponential growth, we have inflation, however, it does not uh, last forever, because at some point, uh, when the universe becomes bigger and bigger, then uh, a number of fermion density will, uh, will go down, so uh, effects of the spin will uh, decrease, and uh, uh, basically, eventually, torsion will be weak and the ancient cartan will uh, basically go uh, will reduce to general relativity. So inflation does not uh, uh, last forever. So basically, we don't have eternal inflation, uh, uh, and in inflation basically ends. Now here, so basically, now what happens? If you have closed universe, let's assume universe is closed, universe which is closed would like to, would like to, uh, without dark energy, would like to reach the maximum size and uh, go, go to the small scale factor. Now we have the bounce. Uh, torsion will avo avoid zero. So we would have, uh, without particle production, we would have universe which is cyc cyclic, but without singularity. But now with the uh, particle production, the universe basically each, uh, at each bounce there is more matter, so each cycle is larger and larger, and at some point universe can reach the size where dark matter can, uh, where dark energy can uh, uh, dominate, and basically after several bounces and cycles, universe will uh, escape the, uh, the cycles and will expand to infinity. So this, this was done by Bondi actually in the, in the 60s, this analysis. So basically now, just to finalize, uh, we, uh, uh, with my colleague Dr. Shantanu Desai, we integrated those two equations. We found that uh, number of bounces depend on uh, this uh, particle production rate. So near the critical value we have on one bounce, but if the particle production rate is a little smaller, well, we get more bounces because uh, we get more bounces, and here is a nice diagram showing uh, that basically initial value of the uh, of the of the scale factor is not too much important for the analysis. It is the particle production rate which tells us, for example, how many efforts of inflation we have. And actually, here's like a little footnote that well, if if the initial size of the universe is not important, well, it could have originated inside a black hole, which is like an idea which was done in 1970s by Patria Smolin. I was playing with this like five years ago, and so who knows, maybe the ori maybe universe originated in the interior of a uh, black hole. But here are just, uh, just two slides. Here is the dynamics of the early universe for uh, the particle production rate near critical value. You see here's exponential inflation, here's a logarithmic uh, diagram, and then inflation and, and uh, yeah, uh, and here's also how, how the Hubble parameter depends. Here's a constant and it goes down. And here's temperature. Temperature during inflation is constant approximately, and then, infl then torsion becomes weak uh, and inflation ends. And basically, uh, 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 the last slide is uh, that it, it's, at uh, Ellis and Madsen wrote a paper in the 1990s that it is possible for every dynamics of the universe find a scalar field which would give us the same dynamics. So basically, my colleague Shantanu Desai did the analysis. He basically found uh, what is the potential of scalar field which gives us identical dynamics. So basically, we don't assume scalar fields exist, but mathematically, what scalar field would give us the same dynamics? And w once we have the potential of scalar field, we can just we plug in scalar field to, uh, to, to find out uh, all, the, all the parameters which are measured by CMB. And here, basically, here's the uh, s uh, spectral uh, scalar index, and here's tensor to, tensor to scalar ratio. And basically, you see that uh, 0 0.96, that's what Planck uh, measures. So this region, for example, so again, initial scale factor of the universe is not important too much, but basically we want to be near the critical value of this particle production rate. So here is the region which is supported by Planck, and here is now for, for uh, tensor to scalar ratio, uh, the bound is 0 0.09, so our values are below, so they are consistent with Planck 2015 uh, observations. So basically here, uh, yeah, 
Professor George Field and Dr. Rosanti Stefano. I mentioned them here as people who did torsion here, and here are the references uh, for, uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about uh, uh, torsion and spin. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is a g good question because this, like, a, uh, in this model, we basically approximate uh, Dirac particles as spin fluid. So basically, we know that Dirac equation, uh, Dirac equation is responsible for torsion because they are coupled actually. But so I did a spin fluid approximation. So basically, uh, there are conservation laws uh, uh, for uh, curvature and uh, torsion tensors. And what I did is I assumed a, a particle approximation limit in something called Papa Petro multiple expansion. So Papa Petro wrote in 1960s, 50s, like a paper how he derived the energy momentum tensor uh, in the point particle approximation of the conservation loss. And then in 19, uh, 1990, uh, th there was a paper which extended this to Einstein Cartan theory, and they derived uh, uh, basically that's. Uh, they derive spin fluid, a spin fluid uh, uh, representation of spin density. So I use that. So of course the uh, interactions, well, interactions uh, are important. But basically, uh, I used the spin fluid approximation, which derives from the conservation law. So it has to be there. Now, of course, the interactions could do something maybe for the particle production rate. So of course, uh, now this has to be corrected. Also. Well, really, we should really we should use interacting Dirac fields, and they are anti-commuting fields, right? So this is just the first step. So we see that it could be explained, but of course, it has to be fully quantized, right? Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you.